Hey ladies, Cassidy here with Cassidy's Timeless Creations. I'm here today um, to do a video, um, kind of a how-to on how to make my bottle cap labels. I'll just show you a couple of the ones that I have. Um, so some of these are already in my Etsy shop. There's two of them, and I have one more. Right here. All right. So these are the current ones that I have. These are all available in my Etsy shop. Um, so this is what I'm going to teach you guys all how to make today. So the supplies you're going to need, I'll put those also in the description box below, but you will need bottle caps, you're going to need, um, <clears throat> depending on what you want it to be, um, it's going to depend on like the closure thing, like I have lobster claws because so I like to make mine into kind of like bookmarks. Um, So, sorry about all the noise I was getting out the other things that I needed. Okay, so you're gonna need your bottle caps. You're going to need a one inch punch or bottle cap stickers, which is what I'm going to use today. Um, and you'll need some glossy accents um, or there's a Mod Podge one that you can use or you can pick these up um, at Hobby Lobby and these are just little um, beveled stickers that go on top. But if you're going to use something like this, I recommend using a layer of some type of adhesive under the main sticker so that all of it doesn't peel up. I'm just kind of reinforce it. Um, you will need a way to flatten your bottle caps. So they start like this. And then I use my cuddle bug, and I'll show you guys how to do that today um, and what sandwich to use to do this, but you, you're gonna need them to get flattened. You're gonna need some jump rings. You will need some lobster claws or keychain rings. There are bigger claws too that you can use um, if you're gonna be using this for something a little more big like a purse. Um, here's a couple of other different things that I've used in the past. These are Tim Holtz um, clasps. And these also come with like a little chain that you can use as well. Um, you're going to need, so there's some more of my lobster claws. That's kind of, I think I'm going to use those today. You're also going to need an eyelet um, pin, I think is what they're called, and a a flathead pin, I think is what they're called. I don't know the exact names, but that's what you're gonna need to make the beads. All right, sorry about that, ladies. Um, my daughter needed me. All right, so you're gonna need your eyelet pins or your flathead pins, whatever you wanna use. They come in all different kinds of colors and stuff as well. Um, and here's another type of closure you can use for them. Um, this is how I connect them to my junk journals. So I'll put them on a lobster claw and then I loop this through my junk journal and I'll show you guys that um, at the end of the video. And then I connect it to this so that way the weight isn't sitting right on the, the hole. Alright, and then you're also going to need, of course, Because beads make the world happy. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, so you'll see me pull out this tray. This is just because I have butter fingers and I drop everything. So um, we're gonna start first off by flattening our bottle caps, and I'm gonna, just gonna show you how to do one because I have some pre-flattened that I'm gonna use. So you're going to need your cuddle bug. An embossing mat and then your 2B plates and your A plate and this will not ruin your embossing mat it's going to leave marks um, I have two embossing mats one 
for my bottle caps because it does leave some marks in it and then one that I use for um, embossing. So all you're going to do is open up our machine here. So you got your A plate and then you're going to put your bottle cap, no, I'm sorry, A plate, B plate, bottle cap, embossing mat, and another B plate. And then you're just going to run this through your machine. this up nice and close. So when you're done, I wish my camera would focus on just this. So you can see that it is flat compared to this. And when you're doing this, I forgot to say, um, make sure that you put the flat part down and then the embossing mat on the top. So you're going to have it sitting on your cuddle bug like this. So the embossing mat's going to go on top where the sharp stuff is. Otherwise, this is going to cut into your plate. All right. So I'm just going to pull... I think we'll do this one. And they, all of them take different forms uh, when they are done, just because they're not going to be perfect all the time. Um, so your next step, you'll need, you'll also need a metal hole punch. There is a Tim Holtz one that you can get. Um, it's kind of spendy. I got this in the leather section. Um, at Hobby Lobby and it was I think like six dollars and my seat just got jacked from my daughter um, so it was like six dollars and it does the same thing that the Tim Holtz one does so and I bought this one first because I didn't know if I was gonna like this and then I turned out to love it so so the first thing you're gonna do you're gonna poke your hole at the top So you're going to go in one of, let me see if I can get it to focus. So you want to go in one of the bevels right there. All right. So you'll see it's inside one of those bevels. And you're going to poke your hole. All right. And then, so that's going to be your bottom hole. You'll always know that the bottom hole is the one that's on the bevel. And then your top hole, you're going to put inside where the flat part is. I really wish I had better lighting. So inside where this flat line is. And you want to make sure that it's directly above or below. Like I just turned it around. So you want to make sure it's directly below so that this hangs correctly. All right, so you can see that that's pretty, I think that's directly below, it's close. And then you're gonna poke your hole. And the reason you wanna do that is, the reason you wanna do this before is because once you start putting stuff on here, it's gonna affect it. All right, so your next step is I think we're gonna use some rustic ones today. So you're gonna put your jump rings on. And I'm just taking a couple. And I'm working on white so that you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, 
so now you will grab your so this is a round nose pliers you need this in order to make the bead part and then this is just a pliers that I took out of our toolbox at home and it just helps you grip on the things so Sorry, I have like major butter fingers, so I have to put all of this in a tray so that if it drops, <laughs> I can find it. All right, so now that we're doing this, so we're going to take our jump ring. We're going to take two to start. We're going to open that up. We're going to stick it on in one of the holes. up the second jump ring. Now the one that you put on the top of this you're gonna have to open it up a little more wider than the bottom one just because the hole is farther down. So we're gonna slide that in there. Alright so see I told you I have butter fingers and everything's falling apart here. I lost my last jump ring too. So we're gonna have to re-put that on. Sorry, I keep going out of frame because I can't see. sure that it's as close together as possible so that it is not able to fall off. This is going to be really blurry because I'm having issues. Alright. Finally got it. So... Now you can see what that's on. Not really sure how this came off, but we'll reattach it. My bottom jump ring came off. All right, so I didn't want you guys to see me struggling with that um, for how long it took me, so I reattached it. All right. So we have both of ours on there. So our next step is going to be to put our stickers and or our punches, however you're going to do it. Um, you can do you can use a one inch punch or whatever size your bottle cap is. Or you can pick up these. I got these at Hobby Lobby and they're bottle cap stickers. And they're really super cute. There's a whole bunch of them in here. There's eight sheets, but there's a ton on a sheet. And they have different types of pads there. So I got like this vintage one and I got this really like colorful one that I've used quite a bit. Um, so today I'm gonna use the vintage one because I got kind of this really dark stuff going on. Um, I think I will make, I have a garden themed junk journal I'm making right now, so maybe I'll do this really pretty um, flower design. I hope you guys can see that. I can't see the camera right now. All right, so When you're doing this, I'm just going to bring this a little closer, you want to make sure that your bottom hole is down 
and your top is up and you want to line this up correctly. So you're going to put it in there with the bottom towards the bottom hole. And the bottom hole is the one that's in the flat part on the inside of your bottle cap. You're going to press that down firmly. I forgot my glue. Hold on. I'm just going to peel that out real quick. And I'm using um, Elmer's Extreme. This is some really awesome glue. Um, but you can use whatever you have. Um, I've heard that Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive works really well. But this is just what I use because I found it on clearance. And I was like, hey, I'll try it. All right. So then we're going to push that down. And you want to get a glue that dries clear so that way you don't have like the white of the glue showing. All right. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to use either your glossy accents or your Mod Podge stuff or you are going to use your beveled bottle cap stickers. I'm just going to go ahead. Again, and it doesn't matter how these go on because they're not like bottom and top so we're just gonna throw that in there and now we're gonna set this piece aside to dry all right now we're going to start on the beading process so for each one of my bottle cap dangles I do different amounts of um, Beads. So like this one has a total of four, but these two I connected as one. So it looks like it's three. This one has five. And this one actually has a chain. This one has a chain as well. And this has one, two, three, four, plus a plate. All right. So you're going to need your eye pins. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a few. Um, they do come in different sizes, however I can't use my big ones on this one because these aren't going to match. But you can see that the size difference between those two. So this one is going to be kind of a smaller dangle, but you can layer them together to make it look like a longer piece. All right. So I think I'm going to use these are some really pretty beads. start beating these up so what you're gonna do you're just gonna grab your first one and you're gonna put your beads on and you want to leave a gap at the bottom of it um, so that you can do another hole so I'm just gonna start layering my beads up on this pin here and I try to go like small to large Now this is going to be too small of a spot for me to do anything with, so then I'm just going to redo this here. I'm just going to find something else that will make it more doable. And 
I just play with it until I find something that I like. So sometimes it takes me a little bit to find a good balance on everything and sometimes it's really quick. quiet during this process. It's one of those things that I really have to think about to make sure that I really love what I'm putting together. And chances are, like when I upload this, I'll fast forward it a little bit. All right, and then you're going to take, you're going to make sure that you're holding all of these beads toward the bottom. You're going to put your round nose on the top and you're going to twirl in. And then I grab my other pliers and I try to push it into place like so. This way, there should be a loop at the bottom and a loop at the top. And then repeat. and shiny and mellow and beautiful. the sound noises you guys I just have this weird thing like I don't want you guys to just sit there in silence so I always try to do something um so yeah this one I think I'm gonna do and I'm trying to I have the bottle cap right here kind of glancing over at the colors of it just to make sure that I have something beautiful going on here and something that matches another one. your loops on the bottom here as big or as small as you'd like. I try to make them all the way up to the next bead. Um, that way there's not like an extra gap anywhere. sounds in the background are my kids. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I'm always with them. Lorelai, please don't play with that.
of all of our charms, or all of our beads. So our next step, or our last step I should say, is to be to connect them all. Alright, so we're just going to take some of our jump rings here and we're going to start connecting. And I really like these ones. I got these. I think these are Tim Holtz ones. Um, and there's a variety of colors. I like that. these you don't want to put like it directly on the one that's in there you want, always want to make an additional piece What? What? No. No. And sometimes I even like to on here. Somehow I got an extra on there. I'm not really sure how that happened. But I'm just going to hook this one onto that. I like to um, hook some in onto others or something to make it kind of layer down. Um, so I'll show you like on this next one I put on. I'm going to kind of pop it down a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to put it right here on this middle piece right here. So this way it's going to hang a little bit more, or a little longer. If I am able to use my big ones or a chain, um, I'm out of chain right now, so I'm not using chain on this one. Um, but with chain, you can, like, multi-layer them. Um, like my Alice in Wonderland um, junk journal, that one is made with a chain, and there is stuff everywhere on it so I mean it's really up to you how you want your charm to look sure all right so I am done with the bottom part um no you know what let's do another because this is uneven and I don't like it. So we're just going to throw another one together. And this is something I do all the time. Like if I don't like the way it looks, if it's not even. Sometimes I end up completely redoing it once I'm completely done.
issues today. So this one, basically what happened was I did it too tight to where I can't put anything in there. So I'm just opening up the hole a little more so that I can actually fit this jump ring into it. Let's see if I did it. And now your last step is putting on your lobster claw or your keychain, whatever you plan on using. So you're going to put it on an additional jump ring. You don't ever want to put it on the ones that are already connected. You want to put it on an additional.